What to do when a seller says no. That's the topic of today's show. If this is your first time listening to the show, you have not been to our website, head on over to nolimitsrealestateinvesting.com forward slash script. And there I'm gonna give you a free copy of the exact script that we use in our own company to lock up deals every single day. We've locked up over 1300 deals using this exact script. And this script has been responsible probably for thousands, maybe tens of thousands of deals locked up across the country by our most successful students. So go ahead and head on over to no limits, real estate investing.com forward slash script to get your free copy today. So today's episode was inspired by uh, one of our listeners. And so I'm going to play that question and then I'm going to answer it direct. So let's go ahead and play the music. Hey, Todd, um, if a seller says no, um, where does one take the conversation from there? Man, this is an awesome question because it's something that we've all heard. <laughs> you know, I, I can tell you that, you know, for some reason people think that, right, I'm the superhuman and that I, uh, you know, I program sellers and I slay motivated sellers by the thousands and everyone I talk to turns into a deal. Well, uh, I wish. And so while I hate the word no, and I wish every seller would say yes, I actually love the word no, because the word no just means not yet. The great thing is, is that most sellers, or excuse me, the great thing is that most investors don't understand that. And they hear the word no, and they give up, and they crumble and they set up. Oh, this is not a lead. And so now the marketing campaign that they spent, I don't know, $1,500, $2,000 on, they said, oh, that doesn't work. Mail doesn't work. Text doesn't work. Cold calling doesn't work. Uh, the internet doesn't work, right? They stop following up and that lead is dead. Oh man, I love it. You know why? Because me, my team, my private one-on-one -on -one clients, and hopefully you, right, understand that no, means not yet. Let me tell you a story. Back a couple of years ago, we had a seller in Imperial Beach, California, and the guy sounded motivated on the phone, had his son-in-law living in the property. And, uh, you know, we're thinking, okay, this sounds like a deal, right? Guy's motivated and we go and make him an offer. Guess what he says? He says, no. <laughs> firm, no way, no how, no way in hell, get out of here. And so uh, we put him in the database. And of course, most people, the guy sounded like he was not gonna do business with us. And after that, he didn't sound motivated. The key point here though, is that we smelled that situation brewing, right? We, we heard about the son-in-law living in the property rent-free. And we just saw month after month after month go by without him paying rent. So we knew eventually, the seller would probably capitulate and say, you know what? I want this solution. So I said, you know what, team? I want you to follow up with this lead once every two weeks, okay? And so we called the guy and guess what? He ghosted us. Now, if you know what ghosting is, if you're older, if you're younger, you should know what ghosting is. <laughs> but that means that they ignore your phone calls and text. So we kept up uh, following up by uh, phone call, leaving voicemails, sending texts, sending a video on our phone. Hey, it's um, it, by the way, the acquisition specialist who locked this up, his name is Noah. And he said, Hey, it's Noah. I know last time we spoke, you know, we weren't a fit, but I just want to let you know that if, you know, you're still interested in doing business or I could help in any way, you know, uh, just give me a call. No pressure. No, it's fine. Just seeing if I could help. Boom. Send. So we kept following up and four or five months went by. I think they had talked to him a couple of times. Still, the answer was no. All of a sudden on month six, guy answers the phone. Let's do a deal. I'm tired of my SOB son-in-law living in the property rent-free. I want this thing sold now. Not only that, okay, we bought the property, but we got, a, we got to buy it subject to the existing financing. And if you know what subject to means, it means that the house uh, actually had uh, a loan on the property. And so we just took over the existing loan. I think we bought the sucker I think for $480,000. 
And again, these are San Diego prices. So we bought it for 480. We took over existing loan. Uh, we had little to no money down. I think we gave the guy uh, $10,000 uh, to take over the mortgage and give him his 10K. And then we wound up getting the son-in-law out and selling that property for about $600,000 after costs. We made about $80,000. All, all from a seller who said no. Now, believe me, my team hears no more than they hear yes. <laughs> I guarantee you that. Way more people are going to say no than are going to say yes. I remember at one time uh, we were working with the head of sales over at Tony Robbins Company, and we had partnered with uh, him actually to, to work with our sales department. And so he had come in. And uh, one of our salespeople was saying, everyone's saying no, right? These leads are cold. <laughs> and so he goes, let me ask you a question. He goes, are you expecting smoking hot, warm leads to be served to you every day on a silver platter and for no one ever to say no? <laughs> and all of a sudden he got quiet and he said, well, no. He goes, because what would we need you for? <laughs> and so we need salespeople. And hopefully if you're just a one-man show and if this is your first time listening to this or you're trying to get your first deal, guess what? You are the salesperson. Most people are going to say no the first time around. And so you're going to have to have this relentless follow-up, knowing that most people are going to say no. Know that the fortune is always going to be made in the follow-up. And that even how you, if you have to follow up, just, just call. So going back to, you know, this guy saying no, I mean, he must've said no 10 different times over six months on top of not returning our phone call. But then he said, yes. And so just know how important that is. Okay. The most important thing that I'm going to tell you is when everyone, when anyone ever says no, try to ask a question, right? Say, okay, uh, you know, I understand. Can you tell me a little bit why, can you tell me a little bit about why it's no, right? And they may say the price is too low. So now you could say, okay, well, what would make it a yes, <laughs> right? Turn around. What would make it a yes? And they may go way, way high and maybe you can't do business, right? Or they may give you a number that now, you know, maybe you can do business. So one of the things that I'd like to do that I, I've talked about before is the range technique. So you can use the range technique when someone says no and say, hey, listen, you know, I know that 200,000 may be a fit. I, I don't know, were you looking for some kind of range? I don't know, somewhere between 200 and, and 210, 220. So you can try that and test the waters, but maybe, maybe they're just not ripe. Okay, understand that. So now let the situation brew, right? Let the pain go up, but be front and center. Very, 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 important here. Text, email, call, leave voicemails, do a video, send a thank you card in the mail, and, and send a written offer. I talk a lot about this in the No Limits selling system, by the way. If you want to know the exact sales system that we use to talk to sellers step by step by step by step, all the objection handling, all the mindset tricks that we train ourselves to lock up big monster deals. If you want to learn how to negotiate deep, deep, deep discounts and have a wildly profitable business and all the principles that I train my team on weekly, head on over to nolimitsalesystem.com to go ahead and check that out. Nolimitsalesystem.com. Okay. I'm going to review here. If a seller says no, make sure that you are asking a lot of questions after they say no. Okay, two, I didn't mention this, but you should be conditioning on price the entire time, right? So always condition, always condition. Let them know, obviously, you are here to make a profit, but also help them. Use the range technique. One of the things that I talk about the range technique also is that the seller doesn't have to say no. If you say, are you willing to take 200 to 220, right? It's not a yes or a no. They say, no, you know, maybe it's more like the 230 to 250, right? So use that to, to, find out where the seller is without having to give an offer, okay? Now, sometimes the seller is gonna say no flat out, right? And that's okay. Just know that no means not yet, right? Remember, I made an $80,000 profit on a deal where the seller said no probably over 10 times, 
over six months, completely ghosted us. And finally, on the 10th time, he said yes. All right. And we bought it for the existing financing. Never underestimate the power of relentless follow-up. Make sure you head on over to nolimitsrealestateinvesting.com forward slash script to download that script. And I love those questions, by the way. Keep them coming. You can always send them over to me over uh, on my Instagram at, at Todd Toback. Or uh, you can also email uh, support at no limits real estate investing.com. Can't promise I'll read it on air, but maybe I will. Thank you for sending these in, and I will talk to you on the next episode.